you, you, you know, you know, somebody was talking to me the other day and said, "You guys know how to get it started. You don't always know how to get it started." <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. It's hard. It's hard to start. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was interesting looking at the list of uh, tunes uh, tunes that you sang. Boy, I look for you kids for energy. <laughs> <laughs> and you never disappoint me. <laughs> but we're tired now. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? We honestly have to give credit. A lot of that type mm -hmm. of attitude singing, Michael Sykes and Michael English. Yeah. We were just little plain kids from Arkansas. Plain singers. And we sang three parts. Yeah. We always had three parts going, but it was very triad type of harmony. Yeah. yeah. And they took us in the studio and said, let's make this a little cooler. Yeah. And it just became who we, who we are today. Did yeah. the word sass come in? Is that, yeah. To me, it's singing with sass. Several <laughs> right. times. Attitude. And swampy. I mean, all those terms that have come to be what a lot of people just call it Martin music. Yeah. Just, and it comes natural to us now. You know what? You are an original. I mean, because wow. a, a lot of groups sound like other groups. Not you guys. Boy, you got your, <laughs> wow. you got your own thing going. <laughs> I can remember so distinctly our mom being mm. amazed. That's one thing I remember her going, I can't believe y'all do this, where we would harmonize just doing just little things around the house. Did they sing your mom and dad? Mom did, yeah. and Mom she, yeah, she does. She had taken piano lessons as a little girl, yeah. and so knew harmony and how to make chords. And, and it was a community. Church was such a huge part yeah, of the right. community, and learning harmony and being in choir, you know, that kind of thing was, she, that's how she learned harmony. And, and our dad, bless his heart, <laughs> he, he's just not a singer. Yeah. And he, but he knew when it was good. And we'd know <laughs> when the harmony was good when tears would start coming out daddy's uh, eyes. Yeah. He'd just sit in the corner and he'd look at my mom and say, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's only good, it is very, <laughs> very good. In our concerts, I don't know of a song that has penetrated uh, as deeply uh, as this song. Where did it come from, The Promise? Brian White. And Don Portress mm -hmm. wrote this song. I'm telling you, as a, as a writer, I've been in the room when a lot of good songs have been written and been a part of songs through the years. And the first time I heard this song, I knew it would be a landmark yeah. in our ministry because it, we knew every night when we sang it, it would make a difference in our life. But we had no idea what it was gonna do for other people. Yeah. It's the truth. Yeah. You wonder why the songs move you and all of a sudden you realize that God is on you, yeah. Yeah. that there's something spiritual happening and you don't always know what it is, yeah. but it's the truth. Yeah. And this song is full of it. One of the biggest questions that, 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 that we still struggle with, the human race struggles mm -hmm. with is, you know, why do, you know, why do bad things happen to good people and, and yeah. why do oh, bad sure. things come? And every culture has tried to come up with, you know, with the reasons. But I love this song because it is so honest and it's so right. truthful saying he didn't promise it to be perfect. No, he there, didn't. There, there's nowhere. I mean, we are part of the human race. Right. And yeah. Christians have problems just like everybody else has problems. A lot of his promises come to us in Scripture warning us of the fact there's going to be tough times. Tough times. Like James chapter 1, verse 2 says, to count it pure joy when you face trials yeah. of many kinds because it's the testing of our faith that builds within us that perseverance yeah. that, we're, that we need to face this life. <clears throat> and one of the beautiful things about the relationship that the homecoming artists have with those people who come every night to hear us sing is they're not all church people. And they're looking for that answer too, of right. because life is tough yeah. at sure best. Can be, yeah. It's tough. <laughs> and when they come and they see people who proclaim Christianity and proclaim that Jesus is the answer, not saying it's perfect all the time, when no, we actually true. become that honest <laughs> vessel. Yeah. Or, or that life is simple. Exactly. Yeah. Life is complicated. That's when they see hope. Yeah. More than any other time when they go, oh, they're going through what I'm going through. Yeah. It's pretty cool when that happens. It's been fun watching you watch the monitors because <laughs> it's stuff you've lived, right? Yes, sir. Right. Through the good times, through the bad times, if this stuff is real that we say that we believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
looking at the the footage that we were we know we did it. Yeah. And we remember it. We even finally tell people, oh, those were great times. But when you watch it, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was good. It was real good. Yeah. And the, just the times of, of encouragement from them, the times of, uh, the, uh, you know, like you, you mentioned earlier, the reconciliation, a lot of the grace that was given from one to another during those tapings and at the concerts and the, the friendships that were created and nurtured and continue, mm-hmm. um, you know, will never, never hopefully be taken for granted. Yeah. Sing that chorus again. You know I made a promise that I intend to keep. My grace will be sufficient in every time of need. My love will be the anchor that you can hold on to. This is the promise. This is the promise I made to you. It's good to have you back together. Thanks, Bill. And I think the Lord's going to do a wonderful, wonderful thing in this next journey of your life. Love you, kids. Love you, too. Love you, George. Yeah. <laughs> you are so, so <laughs> sing that chorus. Sing that chorus. God's going to do what, what he's, he's going to do. He's always up to something new. And you never know just who he's going to use. Keep on, keep on. <laughs> so when he calls your name, my friend, find your place and jump right in. If you want to be in on what God's going to do. Go on. Do you want to be in on what God's going to do? Yeah, cool, well, I want to be in on what God's going to do. Do you want to be in on what God's going to do? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> That's fun, you know? That is fun. That's funny. Judy, uh, a lot of folks may know this, but a lot of folks may not know this. Mm -hmm. Uh, You are married to J. Cass Jr. I am. And you got to know, what did you call him, Papa? Yeah, we call him Papa. You you got to know him pretty well, didn't you? I did. And, of course, it never seems like enough time. Yeah. Uh, But uh, he was the sweetest man I've ever met. I'm thankful, not just Papa, but their whole family, that whole family. The Hess family. Yes, I could Joyce was a sweetheart, wasn't uh-huh. she? And could cook. Uh, I know she could cook. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he loved me with his whole heart. I believe that. There was never a moment that I felt anything but 100% accepted mm-hmm. by him and his family. And I, I still feel blessed to be a part of, for them to be a part of my life and me a part of theirs. Well, he was proud of you and Jake and, uh, and your first boy that you named, Jake yes. the Third. Yeah, we call him Trip. Yeah. And, uh, and he is, he's a trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he can sing. He's, well, your whole he's, family singing. I mean, they do. Uh, you got four, right? I do. Yeah. This little I had t- three for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have four. Yeah. 